Hey folks here at OS Reviews, you're watching our closer look at some of the design differences and similarities between Canonical's Ubuntu Touch mobile operating system versus Android and iOS. And of course, these two are the two dominant giants when it comes to mobile OSs and people really know and expect when they pick up an Android or iOS phone. Uh, but you know what is different about Canonical's Ubuntu Touch? Well, first of all, it's a gesture-based operating system so that everything that you do, just like we saw on WebOS and to some extent Miko, relies on you swiping from the left to the right, up, as well as down from the display, uh, and to varying degrees as well. Depending on how far you drag down, you'll access various uh, amounts of information as well as various uh, content that you can customize different programs with. So it's pretty interesting, but it does work best when your phone has a slight curve to the glass on the edges, such as on this Nexus 4, that makes interacting with content a bit more easily, and also get rid gets rid of the requirement for more physical control, such as a home key, a back key, or a menu key, that you'll tend to find on most Android devices, uh, although you can always customize it these days with a different skin. And it's also, like, again, different from both Android and iOS in this sense, since iOS requires this physical home button to get out of a program, for instance. Um, but because of inspiration drawn from even Android, we now have, of course, notification shape. On the main screen of Ubuntu Touch, you'll find the symbolic clock as well as quick time and date information in addition to notifications which may pop up. The drag down notification shade is accessible even from this main screen, and from here you can also drag left and right and kind of tilt your fingers to access the tabs on the notification shade. And they correspond to things like time and date, battery status, sound, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and location services. So they categorize these and sort them out so they're easier to sort, and you can still use them pretty easily just using kind of one hand. Um, it's a pretty nice design trick overall compared to the likes of Android and iOS, which simplifies your information to just mainly two streams. We have one just for basic on iOS, your stocks that you can kind of customize, incoming um, calendar notifications, time and date, uh, and on, I on Android, you have access to quick shortcuts for the screen brightness as well as for you know, Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, all those things are cluttered together, although this will vary by the skin and the manufacturer of your phone, whether or not it's stock. Sometimes you'll have a separate notification area if you drag down all the way, or in this case, slide to the left. And similarly, on iOS, we have these two tabs that you can access. So it's not as divided into so many separate things, uh, but everything is, for the most part, cluttered together. And on iOS, you can also swipe up to access some more of these common features, but they're in two main spots. Uh, when we actually get into the main screen, we have, again, some similarities and differences. Uh, for one, we'll see that there is a main page on Ubuntu Touch where we have all of our applications installed on the phone. Commonly used ones are stored on the top as well as a store icon on the very bottom to download more applications. And there are two tabs. These are these are not customizable, unfortunately, that you can use to look at your music as well as your video. So multimedia tabs are default built into this OS. Whereas on iOS and Android, there is a bit more freedom to customize the various pages. You can add more or less depending on your preferences with uh, more applications and you can rearrange them in addition to maybe widgets on iOS. So this is pretty typical. Uh, you have a horizontally scrolling pages of content. Um, so otherwise, you know, this main page on Ubuntu Touch basically acts as the application drawer you might see on Android. So that's one difference that you'll note as well. Something else that is interesting about Ubuntu Touch is I can kind of swipe from the corner, the left corner of the phone to access a notification tray of all of my open apps that I can more easily navigate through in lieu of multitasking. And I can also use this to customize and pen down my commonly used programs. So it's a, almost like a desktop that you might see on the full version of Ubuntu on a computer, um, which is something that's missing, of course, on Android as well as on iOS. In order to multitask on both of these platforms, you really need to use the home key again and maybe double tap on this two times, and that opens up all of your cards uh, or previously open applications. And you know, on here, also you would tap on the home key or hold down on it to open up your previously uh, used applications. And in this case with iOS, I can also swipe up to get rid of my previous um, applications. So this implementation, you know, it is fairly elegant, but it's taken time for iOS to develop. And back when Ubuntu Touch first rolled out, it was still really quite new and it was special to WebOS and the likes of other gesture-based operating systems. So that's where this influence has, has gone to. But with Ubuntu Touch, I swipe to the right and again, I have these cards representing my open applications that I can close or open or manage very easily and multitask with ease. So that's how that system is implemented, I guess, on all three. Pretty similar now, but again, with Android and iOS, it wasn't this elegant 
when it first rolled out. Otherwise, core utility apps on both on all three platforms are very similar. So in terms of the camera app, you know, it's going to vary from Android manufacturer, but you have settings to go through, turn on grid, turn on HDR resolution, all these things. Other utilities like memo paths, you can find on all three file managers. You may have to download through the app store on some of these. There's a calculator that you can use for scientific view on all three. Um, there is, you know, other things such as messaging, calendar, that can maybe synced with Evernote, for instance, that you can find on all three. So really a lot of common threads here. Now, what is a little bit different is how it implements um, connecting to a secondary source. So with Ubuntu Touch, one of the main selling points is convergence, which is this vision of being able to connect your phone to an external monitor and then transform it into a full-blown PC where you can browse the web and access things like Terminal, uh, just you would have on a regular version of Ubuntu, which is the most popular Linux distribution. So you can run code, you can more easily tap and navigate uh, and do more complex file management, for instance. So that's different. Um, on iOS and Android, if you connect it to an external monitor, it's just going to blow up the screen that you see on your mobile device. So it doesn't really take you to a brand new page. Um, it displays all the programs that you already have just on a larger screen, maybe for watching videos. Um, although, you know, more, there's more and more momentum uh, on by both of these companies, both, both Google as well as Apple, to develop versions that are going to rival uh, computers. So for instance, we have iOS running on the iPad Pro, which is gets pretty close to a pseudo computing experience. And with Android, we see Chrome OS for Chromebooks that shares DNA, of course, with Android. And we also have the Pixel line, which again, tries to have this uh, middle ground between completely being a mobile OS, which is optimized for ease of use with Android, as well as something more of a desktop version uh, for computing needs. So it's kind of interesting that all three are going towards this direction, but it is Ubuntu Touch that does it the best at the moment of having this clear division between work as well as you know connecting to a monitor and then still being able to have your phone when you disconnect it, similar to Continuum with uh, Windows Phone. So anyways, I guess that's a quick comparison, I would say, of most things between these three operating systems and what's really different and what's not. Um, obviously, there are a lot more of minor differences, but you can see from a design perspective, these are some of the main tricks that you'll, you'll find are different between these. Um, obviously, in terms of apps, if you're looking for that, it's still iOS followed by Android that are the most prominent and have the most programs and games that you can download. But uh, Ubuntu does have a fair selection that you can go through, mostly for productivity tasks. Some gaming can be found that run runs offline fairly well, um, but both all three are pretty smooth as well as the elegant overall UIs, I would say. So anyways, thanks for watching this video here at OS Reviews. This was a quick comparison between the main aesthetic differences and some core function differences from a design perspective of Ubuntu Touch versus Android and iOS as these two very popular giants that people know here in 2017. Thanks for watching this video here at OS.